So the Honda K20 is a fantastic engine. It offers so much to the tuner and it's found its way into so many different models and Honda have revised it many times over the years. So let's look at the K20. We'll look at the best mods for it, the best upgrades. We're going to look at some turbo upgrades, the injectors that you need to get up to those high four, 500 BHP power figures and some of the other mods just to help you fully realize the potential of this fantastic engine. So the K-Series engine is very free revving. The red line is typically round about 8,000 RPM, which many would consider to be quite high for a production engine, especially if they're used to driving a lot of typical European models or large block V8s. The K20 replaced the rock solid and popular B20 series of engine, and it's been fitted into some stunning cars like the Aerial Atom. It's also available as turbocharged variants. There's been a lot of revisions. The Type R version was specially retooled and reworked. So getting 100 brake horsepower per 1000 cc's is a sort of benchmark that a lot of engine manufacturers aim for when building and designing a naturally aspirated engine. Obviously things are very very different when you've got a turbo involved. A lot of people consider that to be a particularly efficient engine. So there were quite a few different versions of the K20 engine. A lot of it depended on which region you're actually from but there were some inherent differences just to look out for between the models. Now generally the lower powered versions of the K20 had inferior heads which didn't flow very well and they also had the limitation they had the balance shaft oil pumps now that tends to rotate at around twice the speed of the crank um it's functional at everyday rpms and everyday driving speeds but at higher rpms you run the risk of cavitation introducing bubbles into the oil and that causes all sorts of problems within the engine if you have a balance shaft oil pump on your k20 it's usually best to get that converted to the non-balance shaft oil pump version from the S versions of the engine and you won't have that limitation at the upper RPMs. So the K20 was an important engine for Honda. It came in around about 2000. Things were really starting to happen in the motoring world. There were lots of developments with people going over to using catalytic converters. Fuel injection systems were becoming ever more complex and there's a demand from consumers to have engines that offered more power. So the 217 horsepower Civic K-Series K20 engine, for example, shifts around 316 CFMs of air on the intake. So these cars are really good at sucking in air. And if you can mix that with fuel, it will be met with substantial amounts of power at the other end. The K20 engine has an 86 millimeter bore and 86 millimeter stroke. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned. Please drop us a like. It helps us to get out there. So the K20 is a fantastic lot to work from. So one of the first mods that we'd normally recommend for a naturally aspirated engine is to put a fast road cam in. So the cam adjusts the valve opening and closing on the intake and the exhaust side with variable valve timing in the engine as well. You can further adjust these and optimize them to get the maximum amount of power from the engine depending on the driving conditions that you've got at any given time. But with VTEC, you don't really need to do that. You've effectively got two cams. You've got your standard cam that's good for economy, low speed driving, and then you've got a much more sporty profile to give you the power. And you really do notice when the VTEC kicks in. So getting that VTEC to kick in a little bit sooner makes a lot of sense. And because it's a relatively easy mod within the ECU, it's quite straightforward to do if you've got the right setup. So the ECUs on most Hondas are quite challenging to work on. They're not easily remappable. So people would use the K-Pro, the Hondata or the Apex, the aftermarket ECUs as a way to get around those constraints on the ECU. And it opens up a whole world of tuning possibilities, really allowing you to extract every little drop of power from your K20 series engine. I will mention the K24 because the IPS KME2 11 was used to lift power on that engine and it produced around 10 degrees more duration. But that mod can also work quite well on a ported and rebored K20. But the valve lift will also need adjusting. So there's a mod called K Frank that people do to the K20, which effectively takes the Accord K24 bottom end. So the crank, the pistons, the block, 
unlock the relatively high capacity of the K24 and they put a Type R head on it. The K24 has a slightly larger bore size, but you've also got the high revving characteristics and the, the easy breathing and great fueling characteristics of the head from the slightly smaller K-series engine. So you've got better fueling and better airflow going into the engine. So that's a great example of using mods from other K-series engines and bolting them all together. So people might also refer to that as a Franken build, where components are just bolted together to make a better unit. The K20Z4 was also very heavily related to the S2000 engine. So dropping in a crank from the S2000 is another mod. So check your engine, the versions and whether this is compatible. And you should be able to find a donor crank from an S2000 somewhere that can just alter the way that the crank operates, the lift, the, the piston stroke and help you to extract that little bit more power from your K20. So how far can you go with the K20 before you start needing to think about strengthening it? Well, in most cases, the power limit seems to be round about 400 horsepower on the standard block, which is quite impressive for a mass produced factory engine. Some of the K20 A3 blocks have been reported to be a little more fragile, not able to cope with such high power gains as that, typically with rods breaking, and that's round about the 340 horsepower. So there are a few different variants of the engine through the ages and within the K20, you've just got to be conscious that the specific model of engine you've got can handle the mods that you plan. So do your research carefully. That's where our forums and other online forums and car clubs come in because you can share the pool of information that's out there. Head swaps are quite popular within the K-series as well. For example, you might put the K20A head from those Japanese versions onto a K20A2 and that'll give you more optimal cam durations and timings where Honda have pretty much done all the calculations for you and you're just swapping over the mechanical part. The Spec R K20 engines had a lighter flywheel and high compression pistons helping them to make those legendary high power figures and it also had stiffer valve springs in the head and longer camshaft durations with those ported and polished cylinder heads which makes them really good candidates for a tuning project if you can source one of those heads um, and bolt it to your K20. A lot of the work has been done in optimizing your engine for you. So remapping will alter the, the timing, the fueling, every characteristic of the engine, the way it works and what it does with the readings it gets from the various um, sensors around the engine. So remapping is not usually possible on the K20 ECU. So we need to be clever. We need to get a Honda module, a K Pro or go aftermarket, something like the Apexi aftermarket ECU. We'll just open things up and allow you a lot more options when it comes to tuning your K20. Some of these parts like Honda are relatively expensive, but considering what they offer, they're really worth it. If you're serious about your K20 project and you really want to extract as much power as possible, it's worth investing in good quality tested parts to just enable you to release the full amount of power from your engine. So thinking about the intake, these engines are high revving. They use a lot of air. You're burning more air and more fuel. So if you can get more air into the engine, that makes a significant difference and a significant benefit in your tuning project. So using the FD2 throttle is a good upgrade on the K20. I've seen people using individual throttle bodies on the K20 as well. So with throttle bodies, the trumpet length really determines where in the RPM range you're making power. So if you match that up to your VTEC zone, you really can give yourself a bit of a kick of extra power if you get it right. So on the heads that haven't had the porting and polishing and flowing work that Honda would have done on the Type R engines is a good upgrade if you can't source that head that's already had that work done to it. Taking it in and getting it properly footed with big valve conversions can really free up a lot of airflow going into your K20 engine and just help you to extract a little bit more power from your project from all the other mods you do. But we're talking about quite expensive mods and upgrades here. So this is probably reserved for the more enthusiastic K20 tuners rather than someone just looking to make a little bit more power on a standard street engine that they use every day for work and commuting. So exhaust upgrades are quite important on the K20 series engine, probably more so than a lot of other engines because they're so high revving. So Honda have produced a, a nice engine. It's nicely set up from the factory. But as soon as you start adding power, you need to think about removing the restrictions you created within the exhaust. Typical points of restriction will be the catalysts and the headers of the exhaust. So getting these optimized to improve the flow really does help with making more power. You want to get those exhaust gases away from the engine as quickly as possible. Now, it's not just a matter of going bigger. You really do need to think about the velocity of the exhaust flow because you'll 
effect, the scavenging effect, as the engine empties the exhaust gases, if there's a restriction there, it's not fully emptying, so you don't get as much on the next intake stroke, and there's hot gases already in there, so it'll have to retard off the timing and everything. So three inches is typically what most tuners would go for. The actual size of the headers and the exhaust will vary depending on your project and how much power you've got, but it's not something that can be guessed. You can't just go out and buy a sports exhaust for your K20 project. You need to take into account the amount of tuning you've done, the power you've got, and the airflow requirements of your engine just to make sure that everything is flowing freely and as it should through the engine and you're not sacrificing power somewhere. So fitting fast road cats or sports catalysts can really free up the flow through the exhaust. Those um, factory cats can be quite restrictive, so the sports ones will generally flow as well as removing the cat altogether, but they'll have the benefit of keeping your car legal. Now I know in some areas we're not even allowed to swap out the catalysts, so do check your local regulations and make sure you don't fall foul of your local emissions regs. But looking at that restriction in the exhaust is probably one of the biggest significant points you can do if you were looking at upgrading the exhaust on a K20 engine project. So turbo upgrades are quite popular. You see a lot of K20s at shows with turbochargers, so Honda even produced some turbo versions. They generally drop the compression ratio a little bit, but there's some really good kits out there that include the turbo, everything you need to get it working, the uprated fuel injectors, and the intercooler and all of the pipe work that you would need to fit into your engine bay. So these kit manufacturers have really done all the thinking and all the research for you because it's a lot of hard work trying to get a turbo to fit on a naturally aspirated engine. There's a lot of things that need to be taken into account. The full race twin scroll T4 turbo is one option that people go for. So with burning more fuel and adding more air, you need to think about the fuel supply. So the injectors are certainly something you need to think about. So just looking at what our members have done and feedback we've had from people, there's quite a few injector upgrade options out there for the K20. So the CC capacity, the flow rate of the injectors is the finite capacity that that injector can flow to. And it really does determine the upper power limits of your car. The RC 750 CCs will generally see you hit power figures of around about 275 horsepower. The GT 409R inline pro turbo matched up with a thousand CC injectors will see about 600 horsepower. The GT 3076 turbo with RC 750 CC injectors will see power figures of around about 400 horsepower. And the G-Ready, the Mitsubishi T517Z turbo with RC 750 injectors will see you hit around about 338 horsepower. There's quite a few options out there. Check the article. There's going to be a link below to the article on our site with more details on turbos and injectors that people have used that have worked quite well together and the respective power figures they've got. So they go from about 275 horsepower right up to 600 horsepower. So it's phenomenal power gains on this block. I have seen a K20 Z1 reach about 620 horsepower. Now that had the GT35R, an AFI Sidewinder manifold and 1000 RX injectors. And that was managed by the Apex EN1. And it really shows how good that engine block is. So keep an eye out for the common problems and pitfalls you get with your K20. There's another video coming up on problems that you will likely experience with a K20, but thankfully they are few and far between. The engines are really well built and even when heavily modified and tuned they still offer supreme reliability. So there's certainly a lot of options for your K20. So if you haven't subscribed please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned. Please drop us a like it helps us to get out there and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.